to the Eastern Economic Forum that's underway in Russia's Vladivostok, port city in the far east. Уважаемые коллеги, уважаемый председатель Китайской Народной Республики, президент Монголии, премьер President Putin giving his speech at the plenary session of the forum. Республики Корея, дамы и господа, дорогие друзья. Я приветствую участников 4 Восточного экономического форума. Мы рады принимать глав ведущих государств Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона, руководителей глобальных корпораций, признанных международных экспертов В этом году форум на его площадках работали представители свыше тысячи российских компаний. Нам важен и ценен каждый партнер. И прежде всего, хотел бы пожелать вам успехов в продвижении своих бизнес в Владивосток и Владивосток-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгородск-Белгород
region. And of course, we have to broaden access of Far Eastern agri-products to foreign markets, including Asia-Pacific. In this regard, we suggested our Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and other friends and partners whose business is actively investing in agro-industry in the Far East to work together on dismantling barriers in food trade and to find best solutions for a win-win situation. We understand it very well what kind of significance is attached to phytosanitary control, and we have to work on that, especially since we are creating here in the Far East enterprises and territories um, transparent for common work. We actively engaging in cooperation investment ties with China. Today, Far East, with participation of Chinese investors, implements more than 30 projects with investments standing at about 200 billion rubles. We are committed to positive cooperation with Japanese partners. In the run-up to this event with Prime Minister Abe, we have launched a plant producing car engines in Primorsky region. Preparedness for such concrete and fruitful joint work Work, will always receive our support. There are good opportunities for promotion of infrastructural, energy, environmental projects with Mongolia, our long-standing and reliable partner. Companies from the Republic of Korea are operating successfully in Russia, and we see great promise for joint work with South Korean businesses, especially here in the Far Eastern regions. Naturally, I wanted to go back to the discussion of trilateral projects in infrastructure, energy, and other spheres, with participation of Russia, the Republic of Korea, and Democratic People's Republic of Korea. In order to promote such initiative, first and foremost, we we need to normalize the situation around Korean Peninsula. On the whole, for sustainable development, we need to ensure stability, peace, and security in Asia Pacific. It's important not to allow for the new, new conflicts to appear and for the chronic disputes to be solved through dialogue only. That approach, that constructive agenda that Russia has promoted and will continue to do so in all international platforms in work with our partners in Shanghai Cooperation Organization, APEC, ASEAN, and other regional associations. I also wanted to add the following. I have already said that the world and global economy are coming up against new forms of protectionism today with different kind of barriers uh, which are um, increasing in the past times. Basic principles of trade, competition, mutual economic benefit are depreciated and, unfortunately, undermined. They are becoming hostages of ideological approaches and fleeting political situations. In that, we see a serious challenge for all of the global economy, especially for the dynamically growing Asia-Pacific and its leadership. We are convinced that in order for our region to continue to achieve high growth rates and to continue to remain a key participant of the global economy and trade, it should retain the spirit of economic freedom, to be the space of business initiative without sanctions, bans, and political bias. Inviting foreign partners to work jointly on the projects in the Far East, we're acting based on pragmatism, rational thinking, and mutual benefit. We want for the honest competition of investors to increase, for them to compete for the opportunity to implement their projects in the Far East, for the best business proposals to win, proposals that will bring high profit, which is the bottom line of any business. Take a look. In this region, we already have companies from Kazakhstan, India, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, and many other countries, very different in their interests, traditions, culture, political architecture, international commitments and priorities. But yet again, for all, and I would like to highlight, for all entrepreneurs, we create equal conditions for successful and efficient work. 
It is in the spirit of development and openness we have decided on electronic visas for travel to the Far East. Right now, they are in place for citizens of 18 countries who can file all papers remotely in a simplified procedure. We will work to see the number of states whose citizens can receive electronic visas grow including APEC economies, of course. Dear friends, I have already said that the scale of tax, tasks in front of us requires systemic work in the decades ahead. I believe that we need a national program for development of the Far East of Russia from 2025 looking into 2035. Government will be given instructions to draft this document and to do that in close contact with Far Eastern regions, citizens, businesses, civil societies and business associations. Considering the significance of such national program, it will be endorsed by the presidential decree. Program. Thank you. Program should unite, integrate measures of our national projects and state programs, long-term sectoral plans of ministries and agencies and infrastructural companies, strategies of development of all Far Eastern regions. Such a national program indeed should contain specific concrete, measurable deliverables. And this is the job for, for the colleagues from the government and the regions. But what I wanted to say already now, tasks that we must set for ourselves can only be ambitious, breakthrough, and proactive. Otherwise, we should not do that at all. We should strive for the growth rate of the Russian Far East to be higher than average global. But we understand that this is a difficult task. Our neighbors in the Asia-Pacific, they're showing good growth rates. That means that it's about 6% annual GDP, and this is the goal for us in the Far East. We have strong competition, and the more efficient our work should be. First and foremost, we need that to drastically improve the quality of life of our citizens for, for the nearest future, so that more people would come out here and move here to the Far East than more people that are leaving. We need to have more people to um, work here, to build their houses, to start families and have children here in the Far East. What key spheres are, must be foreseen in the national program for Far East development? Number one, and the most important, we need to ensure great proactive dynamics in such sensitive spheres for people, such as high-quality housing and utilities, transport accessibility, connectivity of the Far East, with the rest of Russia, healthcare, culture, sports opportunities. We should offer special measures for demographic development and support for families. Number two, future of the Far East is not only the traditional spheres that we do have to bring to the new level, but that is primarily modern education, science, international cooperation in spheres that define trends of global progress. We have gathered here on Ruski Island on the platform Far East Federal University. We intend to create here a major world-level scientific and educational center, including building a technopark, as well as a mega science research facility, which would allow to solve revolutionary new fundamental and applied tasks in pharmaceuticals, in material sciences and other spheres. I believe it justified that our leading companies and corporations which implement their projects in the Far East, that is Rosneft, Gazprom, Rosatom, Roscosmos and others, enterprises dealing with aircraft building and others to set up here on Ruski Island their engineering divisions 
research and development centers. I'm asking the government and the leadership of the companies to see that as instruction to action. Today, new technologies are ahead of conventional norms of legal regulation and rules of certification. We want to take down these barriers. We want to create here in the Far East, so, so to speak, a space of the future, the realm of dreams and creativity. I'm instructing the government to work on a special status of Ruski Ara. This should be such an environment where any research team where a group of enthusiasts could receive all necessary conditions to launch startups, to realize their ideas and innovational projects, so they could test cutting-edge developments whose practical and commercial use of which are still not described in the legislation, including in robotics, unmanned and sea transportation, in medicine and biotechnologies, in environmental studies. Besides, as part of our program of digital economy, I suggest to create on Ruski Island the Center for Digital Development in such spheres as software development, storage technologies, and transmission of so-called big data and cybersecurity. Two months ago, here in Far Eastern Federal University, as a part of our national technological initiative, there has been held a one-of-a-kind innovational training course for digital technologies. The whole process, starting with student selection up to creation of individual educational paths, paths were built using technologies of artificial intelligence. Today, considering this experience, Far Eastern Federal University introduced a permanent program to train specialists and managers in digital economy. We will spread this practice to other regions and universities of our country. Naturally, all of the Far East should become a platform for introducing breakthrough digital solutions in transportation and utilities, education and healthcare, in public services. Already now, here, you can receive the most important services for businesses online. These are construction permits and permits to commission enterprises in territories of advanced development, registration of land plots and issuance of licenses. Number three, I'm convinced that Far East is capable and should be a powerful economic and industrial center with great export potential. And for that, we cannot not do without entrepreneurial spirit and growth of SMEs. Far East should, should have competitive edge in business climate compared to other regions of Russia as well as to the neighboring countries. In order to be attractive for our neighbors, and the Russian part of this audience understands that very well, we have to be one step ahead. Already this year, four out of nine Far Eastern regions were ranked in top 40 of national ranking on quality of investment climate. This is good dynamic, but still we have a wealth of things to do. As for federal support, here there is already a number of additional decisions in place. Investors of territory of advanced development and the free port of Vladivostok can apply and receive up to the end of uh, 2025 a 10-year relief on insurance payments. I would like to highlight that for people who are doing into businesses for 10 years ahead. They're already covered by the grandfather clause, so investors have received, received guarantees of unchanged conditions for the implementation of their projects. In order to support entrepreneurs, both Russian and foreign, to ensure their beneficial financing, we intend to top up Far East Development Fund um, already this year by 8.2 billion rubles. Also, I'm asking the government to define capitalization top-up of the fund in the coming three years. Number four, Far East should fully tap into its logistical potential.
Large-scale overhaul of Baikal, Amur and Trans-Siberian Railroad, development of forest and ports and the northern sea route will drastically improve transport connectivity of Asia-Pacific and Europe. In the coming future, we need to modernize border crossings in the Far East to make it easier for the citizens and businesses to interact with customs, supervision, border and other services which are working on the borders. I'd like to remind you that in the coming in six years, volume of transit container shipments, shipments via railroad should increase by four times, and travel time from the Far East to the western border of Russia to be cut down to seven days. Cargo flow through the northern sea route should increase by up to 80 million tons per year. I'd like to say that all these are calculated and accomplishable plans, ever more so since there is great interest of businesses to such infrastructure, its apparent. Northern Sea Route, the shortest maritime passage between the Far East and Europe, right now actually is navigated by the first ice-class container vessel, Arctic 4. This voyage between Vladivostok and St. Petersburg, calling at Korean Fusan and German Bremerhaven, without an exaggeration, is opening a new page in the history of trade navigation. It confirms safety, efficiency, and relevance of the Russian Arctic, of the whole northern sea route as an international corridor. We invite interested partners to explore this promising transport artery. And we already know that there is such an interest from coming from our partners. One more thing. It is apparent that revenue and profit from transit corridors should not be transiting right through the Far Eastern regions, passing by the interests of people who live here. Modern transport and export infrastructure should be the backbone for creating in the Far East high-quality jobs, new production sites and enterprises producing goods with high added value including, and maybe first and foremost, export-oriented production. This is extremely important. It's important for us to create transport corridors and to, for them to be export-oriented, but the most important thing is to develop our economy and our production. Main users of Far Eastern transport corridors and ports are, as a rule, large coal and energy companies. I suggest to think how to incentivize these Russian exporters to direct part of their income in to efficient economic and social projects in the Far East. Dear friends and colleagues, Russia, our Far East, are of course open to strengthening business ties. We're convinced that mutual benefit here is apparent, and we're talking not only about profit, from financial reports, joint projects in industry and science, education and culture, infrastructure and energy, bring together countries and nations. They allow to understand each other better, to learn more, more about each other, to strengthen our common domain, peace, good neighborliness and trust in dynamic and complex 21st century. And so together, by joining efforts and capabilities to build the future. I would like to wish you every success and prosperity unto you. Thank you very much to this forum.